Our favourite film from this series, I think, would be... Well, mine would be the demolition film. Oh, God! Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa! Ha-ha! <laughs> Mine would be the trains, I think. <laughs> this is just the best thing I've ever done. So that was pretty good. Best car I've driven in the series. Well, best would have to be the McLaren MP4-12C. Sort of dull, though it is. It's a pretty impressive yeah, piece I'd of engineering. I like that. Oh, my God, they work their magic with this. And um, thank you very much for watching. The viewing figures have been very good, and you've all been very loyal and very patient with the elderly gentlemen as we continue to plod our way through the world of cars. Um, thank you for all your, all your constructive criticisms as well. What, yo go top gear from yeah. Mikey123? No, no, that was Bozo55. Bozo55 yeah, was yeah. yo go top gear. Yeah. Um, Sperm Sandwich 737, of course, says that it. it this hasn't been as good as Series 12, and he hated that as well. Yeah, but no, really... I uh, hope steer face you like, like Series 13, though. Um, genuinely, heartfelt thank you for watching Top Gear still, because we are getting older and fatter and slower and more blind, and it's very nice to know that you still find what we do on a Sunday evening entertaining enough for you to say, no, let's not watch Country File. Uh, and it's also very nice to know that there are people in Minnesota and Wisconsin who go, go to all the bother of illegally downloading the show. Um, and then complaining about it. And then complaining it. about it. So the British, the British people pay their licence fee for us to make this show and then it's stolen by people in Wisconsin who then write and say, I stole a programme last week and it wasn't as good as the last programme I stole. Which was rubbish anyway. Exactly, and that's the essence of what's going on out there in America. Here, would you like this sandwich? It's free. It's horrible. It's awful. I've eaten it anyway. On tonight's show, we will be doing a segment on motor caravans, motorhomes, that sort of thing. And this is the American interpretation of what that means. It's known as an RV or recreational vehicle. It's massive, it's like a house. That was my phone volume. Um, and uh, what sort of recreational activity you might get up to in here is, well, it's open to your imagination. But I think the upholstery, if you've seen Boogie Nights, um, will give you a clue. This is the eating area, obviously. The sides extend. I've driven one of these. When you park, you press buttons and they go and they go outwards to make it big. So you eat here, you sit here. There's sort of televisions and hi-fi and microwave. This is where you cook, spam and beans. This is where you wash up, theoretically. Fridges, there'll be a freezer and a fridge. The doors lock. I didn't do this in mine, so when you drive along, if you haven't locked it, the door opens. All your expensive vintages fall on the floor and become destroyed. Various unnecessary things here, like shower and the sink. I presume there's a Kazi in here, or the Jan, as they call it. And then you have the master suite where Richard and Jeremy would be staying, with the plush bed, and as you can see, the uh, the polythene on the floor to prevent spillages doing any permanent damage to the exquisite Wilton carpet. Um, gimp mask traffic warden outfit, handcuffs, that sort of thing, alarm, if you can't shout because he's got that big rubber ball thing stuck in his mouth, just the temperature there, we'll put it to hot. Um, that's about it, let's go and have a look at the British version of the same thing, the recreational vehicle, the motorhome, the camper van. Here we are in the British equivalent, the humble camper van. And because of the effects of the Lend-Lease Agreement and the Marshall Plan after the war, we really have to make do with much less than the Americans. It's the same sort of thing. It still has a bed in it somewhere. I think it's. Uh, I think you can construct it under the dining room. Uh, it has another bed up here. I think that's what that is for small people. It's where Hammond sleeps, I suppose. And it does have basic or steer cooking facilities made with formica enameled tin, a very basic fridge, a miserable oven, barely big enough for one of my pies. Um, and then to this, it's been lightly dusted with a few little things that make it feel like a home from home. Little signs that life's essentials 
are still with you to comfort you. Things like this exquisitely turned pine kitchen roll dispensing rotating item and a clock. Look. Look at this. It's positively Jacobean and a coat hook in the shape of an elephant so that when you hang your coat up you can't tell the time anymore but we don't expect a lot in Britain a fire blanket need those if Jeremy and Richard are staying in here these tabs look these are incredible this I happen to know this not that I'm an expert on domestic fittings but this style of tap head has been around since the 1950s and I believe is a British standard along with those colors that went with them like um, aubergine, avocado, sunrise yellow, that blue and the brown. Um, little knobs that, I th yes, they come out when you press them and then in here there's a scrabble and a few bits of the broken swing ball and some very old mouldy novels. Uh, a pack of cards, some poker dice. Um, the people in the, the American RV are having imaginative rampant sex the people in here are probably doing a jigsaw puzzle and being grateful for what they've got which isn't much and yet whole street is disgusting oh oh no it looks like an engine but what it does is you put petrol in at one end and then steam is that overheating oil coming out of there so what was it doing at the end is that that's the oil is that what's, what's under there? That's the oil breather. Yeah, the oil. it's very oil. hot because I think it has run out of water. Well, you must put some more in. I'm going to in a minute when it's cooled off a bit. Would you like me to urinate on it? <laughs> um, I think in it would no. be more useful than on it. No? No. It's 98.4 degrees. It's a lot cooler than your engine. Why don't you sod off and I'll catch up with you later? You reckon? That's well, what you normally do. Well... Man down! No. Ah! Check! It's, it's not me, not me oh, either! Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Do you remember Salt Flats, Macaddy Caddy, in Botswana, yes. my Lancia, very much in this state? Yes. Did James wait for me? No. Thank you. Oh, no, please wait, Jeremy. Please wait and help me with my car. Please help <laughs> me mend it. You Who's can the mend practical everything. one here? Hmm? Who's mended everything in his car? You have. Please he help me with a light mine. bulb. I haven't, and I, I haven't. nearly got the speed Please don't back drive on. into it when you pull away. No, 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 no. So you won, and you're quite miserable. And I lost, and I'm delighted I've had a lovely day. There you go. I'd swap. Yeah, I'm getting as that ever. impression. That's, that's so lovely. I was fantasising about that as I went along in the boat. I thought, well, oh, you were nice. right to. Nice 40-year-old right it. it's it's Ferrari, yeah, lovely, it's comfortable, beautiful. relaxed. Yeah, no, well, the aircon isn't very effective, so it was quite warm at points. Was it? Yeah, that was my. It was all it was. Do I look as if I've, I've been no, cool you, all day? You, you don't look like you've been comfortable. I love that car. It's just gorgeous. Fabulous. Are we quite sure that that camera's right? Well, this one? Yeah. No, because we've both head butted it twice. So how far are we? Ow! The almighty hit on the camera when you ripped it. Hey! <laughs> it's horrible. It's... It does hurt. Yeah. Right, I'll just be my... <laughs> I fell out of the seat. <laughs> I fell out of the seat. Into what? Well, just into everything. I oh, just, God. It was just a nightmare. Well, I'm, honestly, I think I'm going to be fine. It's just my leg. So you it's fell out of, that way? I fell out into the middle. And it's Kuala Leaking. Ooh, 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 that's sore. It's Kuala Leaking. You know the green lighting I've put in there? Yeah. I'm fine, honestly. Don't worry. I don't need any assistance, but it's fine. Thanks. So you fell out of your lorry in your lorry? I've fallen. And it, oh, because the gear lever, you hear about it on the internet, people with gear levers in them. It's really uncomfortable. It's lucky I'm wearing jeans, otherwise... It could have been made print of mine, but yeah. it's called a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, for the first time in my life, my bottom has become a two-way street. How did rig stick do it? I don't know. I don't know, because... His leg is really sore. Did you try putting the handbrake on? What? Did no, you try handbrake turning? You heard my horn? Yes. Fell on that. 
I went well, to the first time. I was exuberant. Yeah. I joined in. I, I came over to see, and it turns out that right next to you, you the handbrake. Yeah. I'm, that's in my bottom as well. Now, okay. Come, the handbrake okay. and the horn button went up my bottom, followed by the gear lever, followed by one of my green lights. If you x rayed me now, I'd look like a performance from Miss Saigon. James? Yep. Have you finished? No. Have you finished now? No. Now? No. Have you finished now? Is that the last bolt? No. What about that one? It's the same one. Have you finished now? <laughs> no. James. What? We found an exhaust last night off an old TVR, uh -huh. which was ten quid. Can we put that on the back of your engine? Yes. Would you mind if we did it? No, I'd be delighted. Would you mind if I did it? No. You wouldn't mind? No, I'd be delighted. I've been here all night. God, James is in a bit of a bad mood this morning. He's a bit tetchy. They're not prompted. James, we've got really bad hangovers this yeah. morning. You should have been last night. It wasn't just... <laughs> You know when you think yeah, about it 11, two. and yeah, and you think, no, nah, let's knock it on the head, and then it just builds up again. Yeah, God, and, it was oh. a lot. It's a shame you missed it. God, she could dance there. Oh, and that melon she had. I've never seen that done I, before. Neither have I. We thought about you a lot. Well, not a lot, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> It is right. It will be. I've been doing it for two hours. <laughs> you are the world's most impatient man. Why won't it come off? Because you haven't done it yet. About must, ten more turns gone? and you're there. Nearly. Well, You'd be a terrible midwife. Yeah, I'll just get, well, I'll, I'll get on with it! Why can't we, why, what a waste of time. It's like a cockroach. It could survive a nuclear blast. This is amazingly tough. So it can stand up to uh, hammer blows, but but not not water, as we see here, and here, and here, and here, and there, and there. Then there's the engine which was designed to run on Russian petrol, which had an octane rating of 76. That's not really petrol, that's, that's spicy water. <laughs> they said this would be a people's car, Russia's answer to the Mini and the 2CV. But it didn't really work out that way. Part of the problem is that it cost three times more than the annual wage. So that's like calling today's Maserati Quattroporte a people's car. But it did sell well in Yugoslavia, Poland, Cuba, and the Socialist Republic of South Yorkshire. And amazingly, the Reva is still being built today under license in Egypt. Imagine that. It just sort of belongs here in these surroundings. So I'm gonna take it for a drive now from here, Portofino, which is a sort of Italian Whitby, along the coast to Saint-Tropez. Think Scarborough. <laughs> Improving yourself, thing, isn't it? Alan Brake. Huge. I can drive around them. <laughs>
And even though it's 40 years old, this car is the perfect machine for the job. No, it isn't. That, that by contrast, That lorry isn't. is. <laughs> and even though it's 40 years old, this is the perfect machine for the job. Unless, of course, a colleague of mine interjects at this very point to tell me <laughs> that it isn't. It isn't. Really? <laughs> yes. Or rather, no. Well, it, it is. Let's do that again. And even though it's 40 years old, this is the perfect machine for the job. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Well, it isn't. Well, it just is. That's why I'm here with it. Well, it isn't, actually. Not anymore. It was. It is, it always has been, it still is, and probably always will be. It isn't, it was, it might have been, but it isn't anymore. I'm and it's lost. not. <laughs> it is. It isn't. It is. It is. It is. Cappuccino? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Internet. Hello, Hello. John. Hello, Wisconsin. Um, and welcome to the happiest day in the Top Gear calendar. The day when I can say goodbye to James May, knowing that I don't have to see him again for another two months. No one is more pleased than me. Not that I'm not going to be seeing me. I'm going to see me quite regularly, but I don't have to see him. Yeah, this is the last day we record the series. Um, after this, we all go off and make our Christmas DVDs. I think it's been a reasonably good series. I think we've mixed and matched quite well. We've had some cocking about. We've had some serious car reviews. We have a serious car review. A very serious car review. Yeah, we genuinely, in this, we do. James and I have done a, a joint one together um, on the electric cars. The situation is completely normal. <laughs> well, we've done that um, because it is quite an interesting subject, that. And then uh, there's a very touching film at the end of this week's show, um, which Hammond has done, um, which I urge you to watch. These guys are soldiers. They're men of action. They're used to having challenges, problems, obstacles to overcome by working together as a team. This isn't a treat. This is therapy. It's something they need to do if they're going to recover as well as they possibly can. It really is extremely good. Um, we've got the Lamborghini Aventador on the show. <laughs> it's uh, out on the track as we speak, setting a lap time, so we shall find out. We're also setting a lap time as promised. It's because it's not the, raining. Yeah, with the Lotus, the, what's it called? The T125. The T125 is also here, so we've got two laps in the show this week. I think we're ending up on one of those shows that people who like bits and bobs, you know, there really is no cocking about absolutely none at all in this week's show. No, actually, it's completely cock about free. What? What? 